One of the things that I noticed from the past several decades was that there isn't currently a tradition, a movement where people of Asian descent in the United States are working uh, in collaboration with African Americans and Latinos, even though that kind of tradition was very lively in the 1960s. And I wanted to initiate a discussion where we might bring that back. Even going to UB where there's a large Asian American population, it's not something that's really talked about. Um, like, I really don't know much about the Asian American experience or in regards to like race and social justice issues or even historical context within um, the race and upbringing. So I just was really going there to get more information because the only thing I knew about the Asian Americans is that they were considered uh, the model minority or what other people of color should aspire to be. One of the things I've noticed throughout high school and throughout college is that people tend to form cliques in terms of who they go to class with, who they hang out with. Um, and that just sets up an environment where these conversations don't really have to exist. So I think the main thing that I'm gonna take away from attending this DIFCON is that it's, it's important to get your voice out. That um, attending this DIFCON and talking to other people who share similar mindsets or have different experiences is not only eye-opening for the community, but it's also eye-opening for myself. The thing that I found really insightful, even like quite satisfying, is that Asian Americans do understand that they have a privilege from what I got from that conversation. But also on the flip side, I found out that some um, Asian American uh, individuals understand their privilege and don't really want to do much to bring awareness to it, you know what I mean, outside of their own community. I, I think the positive stereotype that, that's kind of given to Asian Americans, that we're, we're really good at school, that we place a lot of cultural value on education, definitely plays a big role in terms of, in terms of where this, this model minority status kind of veered off course almost. Because the, the positive stereotype stems from what my parents kind of sacrificed to give me. And I don't take that for granted, but it seems like others feel like it's, it's a sort of privilege that's just automatically associated with us. And I think it puts a lot of pressure not only on my generation, but the generations after me, like my little brother who's finishing school now. Um, there's a lot of pressure put on us to that if we fail, then it's kind of like what was what was all of that for? I think the biggest downside to a positive stereotype is when you don't naturally fit into that mold or into that stereotype. Like I said before, you're kind of shunned or you're kind of frowned upon or people who don't maybe belong to that community or even those who do may look at you and be like, what's wrong with you? You don't, you're not really a part of this positive stereotype, so I don't want to be associated with that. So now that individual is left to pick up the pieces of how maybe they can fit into that stereotype. It's just more pressure. I think some, even in some way has the same pressures of neg negative stereotype. We, uh, people who, who suffer from negative stereotypes have to find ways to shed that image in a way in order to be su successful and progress. And people of positive stereotypes who come from groups that tend to have positive stereotypes have to find a way to fit into that stereotype just to be accepted by their own communities or others outside of it. Education is kind of a big factor in discussing the, the model minority status that's given to Asian Americans. And I think New York City is kind of a a prime example of that. Um, there are eight specialized high schools in the city and you have to take an exam to get into them. And the problem that, that mainly um, white Americans and Latino Americans are bringing up are that even though the, the racial balance in New York City is, is pretty good, um, about 10-15% of the population are Asian Americans, the, the population in terms of the specialized high schools is 
much, much less balanced. Um, they're arguing that upwards of 60% of the specialized high school student population are comprised of Asian Americans, and that's, that likely indicates a problem, which is where the negative opinions come from. One of the things that I did when I wrote the description for the session I facilitated was that I indicated that uh, the Asian American model minority myth affects other people of color as well. And that was my way of reaching out to other people of color who were not Asian American in order to engage them in a discussion about this important topic. So I think the conversation with, with people in the Asian American community can change and evolve because um, I, under, I now see that as they're also considered people of color, whether someone wants to believe it or not, and that that's a conversation we need to have with each other.